idea on something you were talking about, the seven stars earlier. Um, I thought of uh, the Pleiades, are seven stars in the constellations. So I thought that might be. We might be. See, the, here's the thing, that's a valid consideration to plug in. I don't know, I'm just looking at the word seven and the word stars, and they said there's a mystery of seven stars. Right, so you could say, everybody could pick this stuff up and run around with it. I'm not saying, oh, you have to sit there and do it. I, I'm just trying to stir up an interest in looking at the stuff. So here's, what, here's the way I rendered what he just said. The prescribed path of Yahweh's disposition to develop, expand, or become, which is the Aleph Bet and the Aleph Tav, as stipulated in the Aleph Bet, which is the home of Aleph Tav, the place from where matters are measured and weighed, which is basically the plumb line or the reference to truth, yoked to by the use of the tongue, developing steering by language. Now see, this sounds awkward, it doesn't flow nice, because it's like, I'm just reading the definitions of these words, and you kind of have to fill in the blanks to, what's he talking about? But that's the way Hebrews spelled, spelled out, and that's the way those sentence structures. Stating the right words, take off, lift up, spread wings, to fly as ordered. I will grant authority to her, my Israel, if only she, Israel, wraps up in conforms to my image, regards me in the matters I have led her to. One rules and reigns in this kingdom allegorically. What happens next is the likeness of what is imagined and believed in thoughts. Wait, what, happens what happens next? next what follows what, right. one event, what happens yeah. next, is, that what happens? is the likeness of what is imagined and believed in thoughts. Every meticulous little detail sprouts into a flock. That's the exponential multiplication theory. A flock, like a flock of sheep. Rule by speaking correct resemblances, exact, precise, righteous. It develops a siege wall, a bulwark, which is a bastion of offense and defense. Look at Tav Aleph. Revere with awe, or al -tav, revere with awe its instruction. Be attached and affectionate to it with fear and trembling. I will strike them with chaotic turbulence. Swallow these matters greedily. According to this covenant, you get hailstones or gourmet delicacies. Sworn to regard or cursed by oath for violation. He said, if you follow my ways and are righteous in your ways, that you can't even imagine. So when I say hailstones are gourmet delicacies, it's because this word means both those things. So I'm reading both, even though they look opposite. That's the way the Hebrew seems to work. And exactly what you said. You see, you read these words, and it invokes these other thoughts of other verses where he said, which kind of validated is, a, is another witness. Light has become ugly. Man is designed like light, and has become unseemly through timidity and being disheartened. Seek, investigate, examine, differentiate, scrutinize, review, go east, back to the old path, the ancestors' ways, become a citizen, homeborn, naturalized, serve as a vi virile member, industrious, exploited, used as a nimble servant. That's the word shemesh. So that's to shield and wrap it in. Clean, split apart, abandon the former condition for the new day of light now, not thick, entangled, clouded, obscured. Embellished with an administrative mechanism, words with instruments and rhythm, sounds like music. Embellished with an administrative mechanism, that sounds like a... a shine, revise, correct, bring forth, menagerie of Aleph, Bet, color and light. That's like Urim and Tumim, which is lights in perfect specimens. Rain showers right in the middle of doing this. <laughs> Everything sprouting, vigorous and green like springtime, otherwise break the curse. And then there's this phrase, as if there was no basis of truth in my house, as if there was no honest, trustworthy foundation with my family, as if nothing solid my domicile could count on. It's almost like they always say, do you really think I would have left you guys with nothing? 
In my house, these people are as strong as each separate piece of the hidden foundation. My reputation forever is founded on that right there. These people are as strong as each piece of my separate foundation. That's the hidden foundation. You're as strong as every letter of this alphabet, which is his curse. That's his separate foundation, is having his separate letters of the alphabet. That's what it sounds it kind of looks like. That's the foundation of his house. And every one of those is solid. Wow. They look like they're shriveled, like this little balloon that he will inflate them, inflate them to be this migdal, this tower, this bastion of four, fortress of strength. And what did he say? His, <laughs> what, was on, what was resting on, the, on those, those foundations? Was that Everything is building foundation. Yeshua said, said, said that the, what, just read that sentence one more time. In my house, these people are as strong as each separate piece of the hidden foundation. My reputation forever is founded on that right there. Watch, uncover, expose the delicate roots. Quench your thirst. Arrange in parallel order of rows and juxtaposition. That's the word ayin resh vav kaf hey. Why is this called erectology? Because that's the word, and that's what it means, and that's what we're doing with this chart and all this other stuff. It's like I'm trying to play into what David said would be a future prophecy of what will restore the house of Israel. It's all there, ready to open up and give forth at the proper command. That's what it says? Yeah, bet kaf lamed. Bet means in, kaf lamed is all. It's all, all there, and it basically, um, to open forth and give forth, I'm, I'm kind of reading into it, but uh, so I'm, I'm not only reading the words, but I'm kind of reading into what they're alluding to. You can search this out and double check it if you want, because this is no, a media file. So anyway, I mean, this is just like, hey, uh, it would maybe come up with something a little different. Take heed for every detail of consideration. He will help me, my support, dependable. Every desire, every secret, wish protected, every little sprout, a pleasure to regard. Not only a pleasure for us to regard every little sprout, but he is looking at, oh, they're sprouting. He's looking at us the same way. That's why we're getting zero. I know. That's the next why word came down. Did you see that? The next word says, because nothing else matters. Because nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. The only thing that matters is the good zero. It's a what? Zero code. So now it gets into talking about those wicked. He says, worthless, of useless benefit, a path of thorns, abhorred and detestable like sickening dread, lost, banished, all of it destroyed, completely wasted away, because no one takes hold of it. Wow. That's what happened to Israel. Then the next verse says, I will cause to exist, exert toilsome, exhausting labor in them who strive, who congregate, themselves to conform and fulfill the ironclad secret, which seems despicable and cheap. Open eye, wake up to understanding, train to use intellectual abilities flexibly to bring forth blessing and favor, bestowing graces of favor, and burning with fire the odious, that which stinks, make straight, plumb level square, smooth even, control the power of fire like a torch dipped in pitch. In, with, through, among, into, on Shabbat, the seventh day of commanded rest. The word there is bet shin bet tov, but it's not translated that. It's translated as they are cut down in the place where they stand. And it's like in the place. Bet shin bet tov. Shin bet tov is with the Sabbath day. So again, how you translate this is that's not the word Sabbath day. That's uh, cut down where they stand and the, where they stand, where they sit. It's like you cut down the wicked and you burn them in their place. But the other way to read this is make straight, control the power of fire, yod shin resh pei bab, control the power of fire like a torch dipped in pitch with the Sabbath day? How do you control it? In other words, it sounds to me like what he's saying is Burn with fire that which stinks and that which is odious, like the, the wicked. The, get, get rid of all that stuff. Get rid. Of, throw the Christmas tree out the window. Right. Control the power of fire. How do you control the power of fire? Like a, a torch dipped in pitch, you're now controlling fire. It's, it's in right there. Okay. On, sit down on the Sabbath day. Keep the Sabbath day, and somehow we're getting back the control of fire. The fire that will either be exalting his great Shem, and it's just like, uh-oh, everybody's afraid of us, like carrying a torch, or if we don't sit on the Sabbath day, they'll come and burn us down. 
part of the problem was that the rabbis said that, yeah, the Torah is okay, but if you break one of the commandments of the Talmud, that's worthy of death. Yeah, yeah, right. So, you know, they, they're throwing all these stumbling blocks in the, the way of the righteous, and uh, and the people are buying it. Now, also says it's out because it's for Gentiles, and just to say, no. Oh, only the Noahide law is all that's good now. So, so the rabbis, the Jews, have themselves kept the rest of the tribes of Israel from coming back, completing the restoration they of the covenant, Jews. they're hurting themselves. They think Jews are the only one that's going to be saved. They don't acknowledge Yeah, they're, they're hurting themselves by keeping the rest of the tribes away. So this whole thing, again, this is me playing around with the last words, which anybody else is welcome to do. Was that the end? Yeah, that was the end. The end with the Sabbath? That was, yeah, the last day of Bet Shin Bet Nod, with the Sabbath, on the Sabbath. Remember creation day? Yes, but I'm just, it's just interesting. <laughs> wow. So if David really said that, what is he trying to tell us? Hey, you guys, I know you're going to blow it. I know your enemy is going to overwhelm you, but all you have to do is come back to the Torah, come back to these things, and sit down on your Shabbat. And um, it, it almost sounds like he's saying something a about speaking words. There's something about speaking words. Why did David put worship in 24-7? Why did he keep that thing going? Because he knew that if we're in covenant, we have ability to speak some words and make something happen. But we don't know that yet because we've been out of covenant. And the only people that know that by speaking words they can make something happen is the witches and the sorcerers. Mm -hmm. And so everybody else says, well, don't think your words have any power because now you're getting the witchcraft, sorcery, and couple. And it's like, I keep seeing stuff in here where Yahweh says, I give that to Israel. Mm -hmm. What part of 119 is that? All I just read, the, the one I just read was 2 Samuel 20, the last words of David. I know that, but I mean, what uh, this here was, I just did these first eight words. The first, the first words of each of the eight verses. So, so the, uh, if you go on to some of the other of the 176, it doesn't do that. Is that not mm -hmm. No, if you do all the other ones, I just didn't go. It's running out of time. It's already 11 o'clock. So I'm suggesting that everybody try it and see if you come up with it. It's not that hard. you got a dictionary, you got the meanings of the letters. Just go ahead and play around. Every eight words, or every, yeah, every eight, every eight, um, Every words. every verse, every eight, eight verses is a different. Yeah, but you have to see it in Hebrew. You can't do it right. right. So mm -hmm. before I understood, before I had a dictionary, I'd say Aleph. That means uh, plan, sheen is teeth and fire provision, resh is the exalted man, and yod is the hand of work that could be mine. So the one way to read Ashri is um, I will.